Ragnarok is coming, ladies and gentlemen, boys and gals. So if you watch the PS5 showcase, you'll know that the new God of War was teased, and it's coming out in 2021, which is sooner than I expected, honestly. I thought it was going to be 2022, but... 2021 is fine by me. I would surmise late 2021. And people are already coming up with theories and the like about what this game's about and what we can expect. But in this video, on top of kind of relaying some of the speculation that's out there right now, I'd like to share a little fun fact about God of War Ragnarok, which uh, many of you probably didn't know about. This isn't actually the first time the game was teased. Corey Barlog, the director, was pretty sneaky, and he actually sneaked in a teaser all the way back in April of 2019, but nobody noticed until now. So this is something that was reported by news outlet GameSpot. Here's a tweet leading to their article, whose headline reads, Cory Barlock teased a new God of War in 2019. And scrolling down, you'll find an embedded tweet by Cory Barlock, and if you click on it, you'll be taken to this Twitter thread in which Cory Barlog reminisces about the last six years and the development of God of War and what that journey was like. And there are actually a lot of fun facts here. And at a glance, this just seems like any old Twitter thread. Nothing seemingly super special about it when it comes to teasing what's to come. Except uh, turns out that if you <laughs> if you take the first letter of every post in the order that it's uh, that the thread has been uh, posted, you actually get a message. So check this out. R A G N A R O K. That spells Ragnarok. I S is C O M I N G. Ragnarok is coming. That's the very same message we see at the end of the trailer. Right here. Ragnarok is coming. Once word began to spread, Cory Barlog has since pretty much acknowledged this by retweeting GameSpot's article and posting fucking leaks, just joking. And I responded to him, well, time to start analyzing every Cory Barlog tweet as if Kojima himself wrote them. Because, yeah, straight up, nobody noticed. Back in 2019, those tweets have been up there for like a year and a half now. Not a single person realized that it was actually a tease for what's to come. So, yeah, I'll definitely be looking at Corey Barlock tweets much more closely from here on out. Just in case he does something like this again. Real sneaky, Corey. And, hell... Maybe too sneaky, because nobody noticed. Now, beyond the 2019 tease, I want to talk about the teaser trailer that was unveiled during the PS5 showcase. And one of the things that you see is, of course, the God of War symbol, alongside some runes that surround this snake-like entity. And fans have already figured out what this means and what these runes represent. So here is a Reddit post by user 2chicken2burp from 10 days ago. And he said, might be obvious, but the runes in the title card for the God of War reveal spell Ragnarok. Not obvious at all to me. I wouldn't have known this at all until it was pointed out. But apparently these runes from bottom and going uh, clockwise, it spells R-A-G-N-A-R-O-K. K, Ragnarok. Now, beyond what it spells out, there is also the fact that the runes are Elder Futhark runic alphabet translation, and uh, there are different sets, essentially. There is uh, Freya uh, rune sets, there is Heimdall rune sets, and Tears rune set, and it's, I guess, a mixture of those that spell out Ragnarok. And this is actually further explained by 2chicken2burp two two responding to someone who asked, what's an a a eight? Eight? Uh, the response provided was, There are three well-known runic alphabet systems, the Elder Futhark, the Younger or Scandinavian Futhark, and the Anglo-Saxon Futhark. The Elder Futhark is the oldest one of the three. Each have their own runes that shouldn't be mixed or the meaning and intent is lost. An eight, plural a tier, is a division of said runes into groups or sets. In the Elder Futhark, there are three ethere, which divide its 24 runes. Freya's eight... 
Heimdall's eight and Tyr's eight. Each eight has eight runes. Now, somebody noticed that if you look at these runes, you'll see that six out of the eight runes are from Freya's eight. And a lot of people are looking at that and thinking, does that mean that Freya is going to have a significant involvement in the next God of War? I personally think that's pretty apparent from the way things left off in God of War 4. But uh, there is this interesting response that further alludes to that, stating that having just platinumed God of War 4, Mimir says in one story that the guy who built Asgard's walls whispered something in Freya's ear, which Mimir believes to be the secret to destroying Asgard come Ragnarok. And in addition to that, the user notes that also apparently Baldur's death was supposed to be what causes the three-year winter that precedes Ragnarok. Kratos killing Baldur is why the long winter is already happening in the endgame of God of War 4. She's also asking around for her Valkyrie wings after the story of God of War 4, so she'll likely play a major part in God of War 5. Layer that on top of Freya's et being such a big part of the word Ragnarok here in this logo. It all lends itself to uh, us being able to be pretty sure that Freya will be a huge part of this game, that she'll be a key central character in the conflict. Beyond the runes, there is the snake and serpent imagery featured on the logo. There is plenty of speculation going around as to what that might mean. Some are saying that it might be related to the world serpent and the relationship with Atreus. Others are saying that the serpentine symbol might somehow be related to this section of the mural. At the end of God of War, you may recall that uh, a mural is unveiled one that essentially was drawn up by uh, Atreus' mother, and it apparently lays out what the future holds for them. And among the imagery is someone who looks like Atreus and someone who looks like Kratos, and there's this serpentine element that's kind of going in and out of their mouths. Now, when people have asked about this, there are those who responded with stuff like, no, that's him giving the death rites or casting a spell. Those are words coming out of his mouth, not snakes. And if we go back to the image, you can see that there are indeed characters kind of inlaid within this serpentine shape. At the same time, though, for me, I feel like there's no denying the serpentine nature of this shape. And that might certainly have some ties to the serpentine symbol in uh, God of War Ragnarok's logo. But there are those who insist that it's not a demon, it's not a snake, it's not Jormungandr. It is serpentine, but it is actually a speech bubble, though it is certainly not death rites. The text inside, it only repeats one word, Kuane, which in contemporary Icelandic is Kvain, which translates as cry or whine. So this is another perspective. Apparently it's not death rites. It is just a word that's being repeated over and over again within this serpentine-shaped speech bubble. Here we have another Reddit user who really knows his uh, Nordic. And scrolling down, you'll find a segment in which he breaks down uh, the last scene portraying Kratos' death. These are runes on the snake-like thing. And apparently, uh, the characters inscribed within that serpentine shape, the Old Norse uh, is read as such. The translation is come. And then he adds, although it is really blurry to be identified clearly, I think the word is used repeatedly on the snake's body. Sounds like Kratos and Atreus are being summoned by someone to hell, perhaps. And the snake is like an artistic representation of a spell or curse. Now, beyond the serpentine shape, the mural also showed runes on the corners here. So there's one up here, 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 and I believe one more down here that's kind of blocked off a little bit. Well, one Reddit user managed to provide a translation for those. So Reddit user Yoshi. Sha212 two years ago noted that for anyone interested, the runes read uh, transcribed Svik and Lat, uh, Fothor and Hormung, translated betrayal, death, father, disaster. So, yikes, that's real ominous. But with all that in mind, the question becomes is this serpentine logo related to that serpentine speech bubble that has some ominous uh, predictions? Or. Is that not related to this logo at all? Is this more representative of the world serpent? Or is there another meaning that we don't know about? Hard to say at this point. All we know for sure is that the runes do in fact spell out Ragnarok. And obviously the game's going to deal with uh, the iconic... Norse mythology apocalypse. There are others who have noted, however, that if you look at this mural, this person here doesn't actually look 
like Kratos in the other sections of the mural. So this is what Kratos looks like. You can see the markings that highlight uh, Kratos' features alongside consistent uh, attire that is portrayed throughout the mural. But if you look at this figure, the markings aren't really there. The attire is different. So this might not even actually be Kratos. Uh, it says right here, Kratos with clothes consistent. In the other murals, clothes are not consistent with Kratos' other murals. Maybe it's Tyr. But I don't know. These are some interesting anecdotes that people have relayed and highlighted. I hope this provides some compelling food for thought. And as we await God of War 2's or God of War Ragnarok's 2021 release, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Cory Barlog's uh, sneaky teaser alongside what your theories are when it comes to the serpentine shape of the logo and the inlaid Ragnarok runes in there. Share your speculation in the comments below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.